Greetings everyone! It's been a while since I posted any videos. For the longest time it was too cold and there was always something better to spend my time on. Those who are married with kids, six days a week job and spouse going to school will understand what I mean. Anyhow, today I'm going to tell you about one major update to my garage shop, the vertical mill. Specifically, I'm going to share with you some techniques that I use that work for me on how to move it on the concrete floor and how to get it off the pallet using only basic manual tools. My original plan was to use the rental forklift to set the machine where it needs to be and to be done with this. However, as you can see, my plan had one little flaw in it. The forklift didn't fit through the garage door. I had to think of a plan B. I needed to move the mill about 15 feet deeper into the garage, then get it off the pallet, then set it onto pads to level it up. I used a couple of 10 foot long boards and the rental truck to simply push the machine. First attempt revealed some weakness in one of the boards and nearly ended up in a failure, so I just doubled it up. If I had seen what you are seeing right now during pushing the machine, I would think of something better. But it, it still worked out and nobody got hurt. Nice and steady now. There you go. Then I added a spacer pallet and pushed some more. Then repeat the process one more time. After I no longer could use the truck to move the machine within the garage, the entire setup looked like this. And what's left of my driveway looked like this. If this is a 3,500 pounds machine. Together with the forklift, it's close to 10,000 pounds against maybe an inch or so of an old cracked asphalt over a soaked ground. What did I expect? Next, I needed to move the mill sideways to set it where it needs to be and I tried to use this tire setting tool slash pry bar to do that, but it did more damage than good. Then I dug out my 5 foot digging bar. It's a nice! While doing this back breaking labor and sweating through my jacket, I, th I suddenly thought that I could have saved myself this trouble if I started the whole truck machine moving maneuver a little bit to the left. But oh well. When roughly in position, using the same digging bar, I pushed the machine off the pallet to the side. These temporary stands are a little bit taller than the pallet. Little disappointment there when the bar didn't work to lift the machine for support placement. I needed to move the machine further off the pallet to get it where the car jack could be used instead. And sure enough, it saved the day. I had few different ideas about how to get rid of this pallet from underneath the machine. One of them was to use a sawzall to chop up the pallet and pull it out piece by piece. Maybe next time for the sake of making a good footage I'll do that, but for now I just push it forward to set three corners of the machine on temporary supports. We're repeating a successful trick with a car jack. Just as a precautionary measure, I ran a chain up from the machine's eye bolt to a ceiling beam. I'm sure if the machine was to fall, it would probably pull those flimsy roof truss 2x4s with it and possibly bring the whole garage down, burying me under. Dark, dark prospect if you ask me. But I did it anyways, just in case, you never know. It could also save my life. The mill is front heavy and having it on three temporary supports made it possible to slide the pallet out from under. Next, I reduce temporary supports one side at a time, little bit at a time. 
As always, I face some challenges even doing something simple as this. The second stage support reduction to single 2x4 didn't allow enough clearance for the car jack to slide out. Here you'll see how the machine rests on the car jack instead of 2x4s. This is where the digging bar shines through. I came up with this rigging setup where a block is placed under the lever while prying the machine to suspend it up in the air. Surely I didn't invent this method, it was probably used for millennia and maybe even to build the Great Pyramid. This method came in very handy with the rest of the machine maneuvers and I even used it to place leveling pads under each corner of the base of the mill. This chipped epoxy is what I'm going to have to live with for trying to save a dollar on machinery moving services. There is one eighth thick neoprene rubber placed under each support to help dampen the vibrations. If you saw something interesting today, hit that like button. Please also subscribe for more videos and share to help this channel grow. If you're still here, please consider supporting me at Patreon. Anything is appreciated and will be used to speed up the commencing of my project as well as improving the quality of the content. Thanks for watching and have a great day!